That's right. Is that for him? Yes, sir. All right, then I'll take it. Thank you. What did you say? I didn't say anything. Oh, I thought you said something. No. Oh. What did you say? I didn't say anything. No, I thought you said something. No? No. You know, Watson, the, the interesting thing about the queen bee is that she seldom leaves the hive and is generally followed and protected by the other bees. Just arrived. The messenger said it was for you. What is it? Well, it's uh, obvious, isn't it? Yes. Holmes, you never told me. Told you what? Well, I hadn't got one. Or I hadn't until now. Well, where did this come from? I don't know. I was in there. Well, what do we do now? Well, you're the doctor. Don't you know? I'm not that kind of a doctor. Oh, I see. Well, uh, shall we examine the matter a little more closely? Can you, um, pick it up? Do you mean, am I strong enough? No, no, no. I mean, uh, do you know how? There's a, there's a sort of special way of handling these things, isn't there? Nothing special about it at all. You just pick it up. You're just uh, pick it up, eh? Oh, well, I'll try. Oh, no. Well, Watson, there's nothing to it at all. I told you. <laughs> He's a good-looking chap, isn't he? <laughs> Sing it a lullaby. What? Lullaby. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, rule Britannia, Britannia rules the waves. Britons never, never, never will be slaves. Uh, oh, he doesn't like that. He's crying. I can hear him. Yeah. So what do we do now? Perhaps he's hungry. Yes, of course, the poor fellow, he's hungry. Well, uh, make him a cup of tea, Watson. Babies don't drink tea, they drink milk. Oh, do they? Oh, well, then, make him some milk. Perhaps that's the mother. Oh. Not the mother. What's that? It's a baby. Well, so it is. Is it yours? Certainly not. Well, he's crying. Oh, really? Now, we've been able to deduce that without the aid of Scotland Yard. Oh, you need to be stopping growing. Oh, yes. <laughs> the little mother. All right, you hold it. Why oh, stopped? So he has, he has stopped. But he likes you. Well, I'll be darned. No, oh, please be straight. No profanity in front of the child. Who does it belong to? It came in a basket. Babies don't come in baskets, Holmes. They've got to belong to someone. Well, maybe there's a note. There is. It's addressed to you. Dear Mr. Holmes, please keep Tony for me. I will contact you as soon as I can. Signed, Madame Henri Durand. 
Madame Durand. Mean anything to you, Lestrade? Well, yes, that's why I'm here. I wanted to talk to you about him. You mean her? No, I mean him. Him? No, not him. His father, Dr. Henri Durand. Dr. Henri Durand. Oh, yes, yes. You mean the young French inventor? Yes, that's right. This must be his son. Dr. Durand was kidnapped yesterday morning, just as he was leaving the Admiralty. I didn't read anything about that in the papers. No, it's been a very well-guarded secret. Hardly anybody knew Dr. Durand was in this country. Well, then it might be safe to assume for the moment that Madame Durand learned the whereabouts of her husband, went after him, and fearing for the child, sent him here in our safe king. Mm-hmm. Have you any lead at all as to who could possibly have kidnapped Dr. Durand? Well, at the moment, none at all. Where are they staying, Lestrade? At a mansion that the Admiralty loaned them, just off Berkeley Square. Well, then I think that should be our first call. Let's go. No, no, no. Someone has to mind the baby, Watson. Mind the baby? Yes. Me? Who else? Well, I, I don't know. Couldn't we find a nursemaid? Do you know any nursemaid? Well, I haven't had much use for one lately. And I think it would be wiser if no one knew that the child were here for the time being, Watson. Madame Durand obviously had reason to believe that his safety was threatened. Yeah. Hey, he's starting to cry. Yes, we can hear that. You know. Sing him a lullaby. Rule Britannia, Britannia rules the way. Britain. That doesn't sound like a lullaby to me. Well, you think of one. It's been a long time since anybody sang me a lullaby. <laughs> Of course, our trouble is we're far too many suspects. Every country in the world would like to lay its hands on this invention. Or Dr. Durand. Tell me, Lestrade, what is the invention exactly? Well, it's a... It's a sort of a ship that sails underwater. I don't understand it myself, but they say that any country that has it would control the seas in the event of war. I see. Then I presume that Dr. Durand's presence in this country has something to do with his invention. Oh, more than that. Mm -hmm. Yes, his being here is part of a secret naval treaty between France and Britain. Really? Has anybody ever tried to contact this Dr. Durand before, to your knowledge? No. Not that we know of. Mm -hmm. The whole thing's a completely blank wall. When did you return from your errand? It was about an hour and a half ago, sir. Where did Madam send you? To the chemist, sir, to pick out some things for the baby. How long were you gone? Half an hour at the mess, sir. Had anyone called on Madame Durand prior to your departure to the chemist? No, sir. We've had no callers at the house at all today, sir. Not even a messenger, perhaps? Ah, yes, sir. There had been a message. Who delivered it? A man. Uniformed? Uh, no, sir. He wore a dark suit and was about um, 40 years of age. Did he wait for a reply to his message? No, sir. He left immediately. He left immediately? Yes, sir. You're quite sure he didn't wait for a reply to his note? No, sir, he didn't. Is anything wrong, sir? Come, Lestrade. Well, back to Baker Street. We've overlooked the most obvious danger. Danger to whom? Holmes! Holmes! <laughs> Up. Get him on the couch. There's blood on his head. Yes, I know. I've been a fool. They came in. I, I know, Watson. Don't try and talk. I know what happened. I, I, I should have known it was going to happen. But what did happen? Yeah, get his medical case. It's in his room. Holmes, they came in. They struck me on the back of the head. I never... It's all right, Watson. Don't try to talk. Got a look. Here. <coughs> Holmes! It's all right, Watson. It's all right. They yeah, got him. Got who? The child. They've taken the child. Don't worry, Watson. We'll get him back. But, but you don't even know where he is. That's true, but I know how I can find him, Watson. I know how I can find him. Turn. 
turn to the case of the Baker Street nursemaids. The problem was an obvious one. Dr. Durand had been kidnapped, and now his child. There was no question that with his sons and wife's safety threatened, the poor man could be made to divulge the secret that both France and England were trying to guard. Holmes worked with feverish haste for some lead, some clue, that would tell us which one of the many possible foreign powers was responsible for this outrage. His only aid was a scrap of paper, the paper that accompanied the child. Yeah, but how can you be sure, Holmes? Well, Madame Durand received the note from the messenger, and although she followed its instructions, she feared for the life of her child, so she brought him here. You can see this piece of paper has been torn from a much larger sheet. And the paper is neither English nor French. And you expect to be able to tell from all this exactly where the paper was made? Certainly. Writing paper is almost as distinctive as writing itself. Its contents, method of manufacture and construction differ enormously from country to country. Now, watch this. That's it. What's it? Yes, what does it mean? There are only three embassies in London who'd use such a paper. It now only remains to investigate each one. Now that's the kind of job I can do. I'll have men deployed around each of the embassies. No one will be allowed to enter or leave until... All right, I'll take it. Excuse me, Dr. Watson, but I must speak to Mr. Holmes immediately, sir. Come in. Is that for me? Uh, yes, sir, it is. It was delivered to the house by the same man as delivered the last message to Madame Durand. He asked me to deliver it to you immediately, sir. Dear Mr. Holmes, your entrance into this situation was for me an unexpected development. Now that it has occurred, however, I'm certain that you will, by some method, discover the whereabouts of my guests. Any attempt to free them at this time would be for them disastrous. I offer this alternative. When Dr. Durand has given me the information I ask of him, he and his family will be left unharmed. I will leave England immediately thereafter. Their fate now rests in your hands. Count Tenno. Now we know which one of the three. I can surround the house, close off the entire area. He says he'll kill Dr. Durand if that happens, and I believe he will. But the man must be an absolute fanatic. Oh, yes, he is. What do we do now? We think. You delivered the message to the butler? Yes, Sheriff Kevinson. And then, as you instructed, I waited and watched. The butler left the house in a few minutes and proceeded directly to 221B Baker Street. Good. Then Holmes has the message. And I believe he's wise enough to know that I'm not bluffing. They will try nothing for the present, but they will attempt to stop us at the border. Your departure by boat has been arranged, Your Excellency. It will arrive at the appointed place on the coast at 7.30 tomorrow morning. And we will have Dr. Durand's secret long before then. You may go. Come in, gentlemen. Lawrence. Yes, Your Excellency. 
Please inform every man in the house that Mr. Holmes and Dr. Watson are here. Tell them that if they should hear this bell, they are to follow exactly the emergency instructions I've given them. Yes, Your Excellency. Every man will be alerted. Now, won't you be seated, gentlemen? Thank you. Tell me, what sort of a trick do you think we try to play on you, Count Tenor? I could think of a few, but I'm afraid Sherlock Holmes could think of a few more. My men are extremely competent. I have no doubt they are, Count. And now, the purpose of your visit, gentlemen? Simply stated, we wish the safe return of Mr. and Mrs. Durand and their child. Stated simply enough. To begin with, of course, they are not here. You seem to doubt my word, Dr. Watson. It would appear so, wouldn't it, Count? Very clever, Dr. Watson. <laughs> oh, well, it's usually not too difficult to prove a liar a liar. And now, the purpose of your visit, gentlemen? To make you an offer, shall we say, Count? What kind of offer, Mr. Holmes? A guarantee of safe passage out of England for the safe return of the Durand family. I believe I can guarantee my own safe passage out of England. Every port, every exit will be blocked by the authorities. The authorities would attempt to block every port and exit. But we'll have to wait to see if they can succeed. The police can always force their way into this house, you know, Count. And I can pull this bell cord. Dr. Durand will be killed immediately and automatically in either case. Yes, but what assurance have we that you won't kill Dr. Durand anyway, in order to stop other countries getting his secret? I'm afraid you will have to wait to see about that too, Dr. Watson. Then I gather that we can't come to an agreement with you, Count. I'm surprised at your naivety, Mr. Holmes. You have nothing to offer me. You should have known that. Lawrence! The gentlemen are leaving now. See them out and bolt the door very carefully behind them. Just by way of inquiry, of course, if there was any possibility of uh, bribing you. Uh, no, no, that's uh, what I thought. That's what I thought, too. Mm. Oh, um... Well, the first part of the plan, we're in. Before we do anything else, we put that communication cord out of action. That's going to be difficult. Well, if it were easy, I wouldn't be in a cold sweat now. Oh, I thought I was the only one. Shoulder. 
wrist stiff and swing from the shoulder. Yes, that's right. Look, I'll, I'll show you a minute. Yes. Now, wrist stiff, swing from the shoulder. You know, you're a little light for this kind of work. Oh, nonsense, nonsense. It's just a matter of technique. Mm hmm Well, let's go upstairs and get a bit more practice. Yes, yes. if it's all right. I'm not supposed to leave my post. Don't leave it. Call him. My government, and I'm certain yours, will be eternally grateful. You're Dr. Watson, are you not? Yes, I am. Gratitude is beyond words at a moment like this. Holmes, Watson. Is everything all right? Yes, everything's absolutely under control. Thanks to you. I didn't do anything. That's what I mean. Well, I... I suppose everybody's quite safe. Yes, thank you, Lestrade. Everyone, including the youngest member of the family. Yes. She's hungry, but she's safe. Oh, well, we can get her something to... Huh? Yes. But, but, but it's a he. No, her. But a he, her? But the, the, the name is Tony, isn't it? Yes, but she's a she. Hmm. I say, Watson, it seems we were entertaining a young lady. Perfect disguise, though, isn't it? I'm talking about. 
This chicken claw with a ribbon around it, which you hung over my table. You're crazy. Why would I ever want to do a thing like that for? Let go of me. Don't lie to me. You did it while I was singing. Let go of me, I tell you. You're hurting me. I'll do more than that if you don't tell the truth. Spit it up. All right. Maybe I need some air. That's right, maybe I need some air. Joko Faraday. Yeah? out of the gang, Doc, because if you are, you're going to be knocked off just like that. Now, you look here. I'll give you till I can't three to get out of that door. I'll throw you and your squirrel into the street. Now, listen, Doc. Is this 221B Baker Street or ain't it? Yes. And are you Doc Watson or ain't you? Yes. And you're that bloke. All right. You asked for it. I'm off it, Doc. Let's find the rest of the gang. Rather an effective disguise, eh, Watson? Holmes! This time you have finally gone too far. I shall go straight out now and find another flat. Uh, Watson, uh, perhaps you've forgotten something. But when I return, it's goodbye. I've never seen him in such a temper. Hmm. Oh, he'll get over it. Won't you sit down, Inspector Lestrade? Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Well, uh, is there anything unusual on hand? No. Well, nothing in particular. I see. No, um... Crime is on the wane in London. Yes, I suppose it is. Well, I suppose you have read about the killing outside a riverside pub. The victim's name was Jocko Faraday. Oh, yes, I remember. There were some strange circumstances connected with his death. Yeah, strange indeed. A chicken claw, to be exact. Of course, I never dreamed for a moment we'd end up discussing this case, but... Well, it just so happens that... Well, I have it here with me. Ah. Yeah, you'll take a look. Oh, thank you. Hmm. Is this the first time that a chicken claw has appeared in connection with the death? No, the second. Hmm. What was the first victim's name? Uh, Shackle. Howard Shackle. Uh, was there any connection between him and uh, Faraday? Not as far as I could trace. Now, Shackle was in textiles up in Manchester. Oh, very respectable. Faraday was the first mate aboard a cargo ship called the, um, Gloria North. Hmm. Yet they both seem to have Trinidad in common. Trinidad? What? Trinidad. Only a person who had lived some time in Trinidad would understand such a warning. What warning? 
The chicken's claw, of course. In certain areas of Trinidad, a chicken's claw bound with a black ribbon is a death warning. Holmes, are you sure? Holmes? I've decided to give you one more chance. Oh, good. Then perhaps you'll come with us as soon as I've got out of this and had a wash. There. Oh, for my days in Afghanistan. Ambushes, poison spears, blood-curdling screams. Peace. It was wonderful. I had just returned to my office after making a tour of the wards. I reached into the top drawer of my desk for a prescription slip. And there it was. I must admit it gave me quite a start. Of course, I notified Superintendent Pitt immediately. And I notified you, of course. Yes, an understandable reaction for anybody who's ever lived in uh, Trinidad. Trinidad? Uh, Scotland Yard reputation for deduction isn't entirely groundless, you know. But I've never lived in Trinidad. You haven't? Well, how did you know the claw was a death warning? Then it is. I told you it was. Dr. Jonas, you must have known that or you wouldn't have reacted as you did. It was my decision to call the police. But I knew about the chicken claw. I had read about the Faraday killing in the morning paper. And when the same symbol showed up here on my desk, it actually gave me quite a jolt. But why did you think I had been in Trinidad? Dr. Jonas, did you ever by any chance meet a man called Howard Shackle? No, never. At least not that I can recall. Hmm. And Faraday, had you ever heard of him? Not before I had read this morning's paper. Then you never traveled in a ship called the Gloria North? Well, despite the fact that I'm employed here at the Marine Hospital, I've had actually very little experience at sea. To tell the truth, I've never even been on a cargo boat of any kind. I see. This whole thing seems to me like a practical joke. A bad one, I admit. But it doesn't make sense otherwise. Either that or a maniac. Why should anybody want to kill me? I've got to get back to headquarters, Doctor, but I've assigned you a 24-hour guard. Unless you've got any more wild theories, Holmes, I think we're going to leave the doctor to get on with his work. Don't jump to conclusions, Inspector. The chicken claw may still have something to do with Trinidad. Huh? I suggest you don't leave your office until my men are posted outside, Doctor. Of course, he won't try anything in a crowded hospital, but I'd rather not take any chances. No, neither would I, Inspector. Thank you very much. Good day, sir. Good day. If you'll excuse me, Inspector, I'd better return to my office. If you should want me for any reason, please don't hesitate to call on me. I'll do that. Thank you very much for your cooperation, Mr. Pitt. Good day, gentlemen. Good day. Chicken claws. This thing doesn't make sense. I believe Superintendent Pitt was right. This is the work of a maniac. I said that. Yes, you said that. Trinidad. Trinidad. Why not Istanbul? In Istanbul, they don't use the claw of a chicken. They use the ear of a pig. Chickens. Pigs! I'm going back to headquarters. I'll see you later if you're still here. Do you still think this has something to do with superstition in Trinidad? Well, then we must find the link, Watson. There is always a link in histories of all murdered men. One bond which ties them all together. Dr. Jonas? Yes. What can I do for you? Do you have an appointment? Yes. In a way, I have. I'm sorry, I don't seem to find one. No, you won't find it there, Doctor. This appointment was made a long time ago. I beg your pardon? Five years ago. Five years ago? <laughs> what are you trying to... On board a ship, Dr. Jonas. The Gloria North. Five years ago, remember? Who are you? My name won't mean anything to you, Doctor. 
What do you want? I'm going to kill you. You must remember, Doctor, the last voyage you took on the Gloria North. The last voyage so many people took on that ship. But it's not true. I don't know who you are, but I had nothing whatever to do with it. I was only the ship's doctor. I didn't issue the orders. I didn't even know about it until it was too late. And you didn't do anything about it. But what could I do? You could have tried to stop it. You could have reported it. You could have done so much you didn't do, Doctor. It's not true. It's not true. You've got to listen to me. You've got to listen to me. I swear to you, you, you got to listen to me. Exactly what it means? You're up to something. Well, yes, yes, you might put it that way. And why didn't you let Inspector Lestrade in on it? Well, I want to do a little investigation on my own first, and the good inspector mightn't approve of my methods. I'm not sure that I shall either. If you think I'm going to become an accomplice in sir. Now what are you doing? We're going in. Well, what were we going to do? I'll show you when we get inside. And this is our records and personnel office. Here we keep all the records of all our employees. They're strictly confidential, of course, and men to be seen by... What's the meaning of this? Why, this place of a basket is half full of... What's your name? Never mind. Take it outside and empty it. This is a hospital, not a college for the development of backward bacteria. Now, and don't argue. And fetch a pail of water and, and clean up the ink stains all over this floor. It's perfectly disgusting. And what did you say your name was? No, don't tell me. I may remember it and dismiss you. Now, hurry up, quickly. Go on, go on. Yes, sir. Holmes, what do you think you're doing? What on earth? Well, that's the quickest way of getting rid of her. I want to have a look at the records of Dr. Jonas. Now, why do you want to have a look at the records of Dr. Jonas? Trinidad, Trinidad. Oh, we're back on Trinidad, eh? Yes, I'm always, I'm always in Trinidad. Wait a minute, Trinidad is the link. Now you must find the bond. But Dr. Jonas told us he'd never lived in Trinidad. Mm. He also told us he'd never sailed aboard the Gloria North. If he lied about that, he could also lie about Trinidad. But you say he lied. How do you know he lied? Did you notice that he had a tattoo on the back of his hand? No. Mm. He had tried to eradicate it. But there was still the faint trace of an anchor with the initials G.N., Gloria North. I believe that it's a fair assumption to assume that he sailed aboard the Gloria North with Mr. Faraday. Well, now, that sheer presumption, Holmes, G.N. could stand for some lady's name, Gertrude Nelson, or... Yet it is. I thought so. He was a ship's doctor for five years. And here's a letter of recommendation from the ship's chief officer, Howard Shackle. Good heavens, and they were all members of the same crew. Yes, well, come on, quickly. Where are we going? Have another chat with Dr. Jones. Holmes! Just like the others, victim number three. Mm. That leaves one more to go. What do you mean? An able-bodied seaman, the ship's chief petty officer, the ship's doctor, one more remain. Who? The captain, of course. The captain.
Yes? Is Superintendent Pitt at home? I'm terribly sorry, but I'm afraid he isn't. Mr. Pitt isn't in at the moment. I was waiting for him myself. Well, just tell him that Sherlock Holmes called. Mr. Sherlock Holmes? Yes, that's right. I've heard a great deal about you, Mr. Holmes. Really? I've read a great deal about you in the newspapers, about your work with Scotland Yard. Rather, of course, it's been read to me. I should very much like to talk to you, Mr. Holmes. Well, if you have the time, of course. Oh, yes. Yes, I have the time. We should come in. Thank you. I was just helping myself to a drink. Perhaps you'd care to join me. Yes, I should like to. Whiskey? Well, have you a brandy? Yes. Oh, thank you. Tell me, Mr. Vickers, do you often stay here with Mr. Pitt? No, not very often. May I ask why you wanted to see the captain? Or would that mean di divulging some very important secret of Scotland Yard? <laughs> no, I don't believe it's a secret at all. I merely happen to believe that Captain Pitt will be the next victim of the mad killer who is at present terrorizing all London. Captain Pitt? Yes. Why? What possible connection could there be between Captain Pitt and such a murderer? And such a maniac? Do you believe that the killer could be such a maniac? Or what else could he be? He might be seeking revenge. Revenge for what? For something that happened in the Gloria North? Gloria North? Yes. It's a ship. A cargo vessel. And every man that has been killed to date was once a member of the crew of the Gloria North on that fateful voyage five years ago. Amazing, Mr. Holmes. How did you learn this? Oh, it's very simple, really, Mr. Vickers. I happened to look it up in the uh, records at Lloyd's shipping office. I see. Why do you believe that Captain Pitt should be the next victim? Oh, it's very simple again. It's because Captain Pitt is the one surviving member of the crew at present living in London. It's an extraordinary theory, Mr. Holmes. And have you any idea who this killer is? Yes. Who? Uh, may I help myself to another brandy? Yes, of course, yes. Let me get it for you. Thank you. You said you believe you know who the murderer is. Oh, thank you. Well, it's only a little theory of mine, but uh, I believe I do. And do you know the motive for murder? You know, it's remarkable, Mr. Vickers, how well you manage to find your way about, for one who is blind. I beg your pardon? I mean, uh, find your way about this room, Mr. Vickers. Oh, yes. But it wasn't very easy for me at first. I have come to know this apartment very well. Well, not that I come here too often, but I have an excellent memory for such things. I have in my mind a picture of this room as clear as you have now. I see. And what if the position of the furniture should be changed about? Without my cane, I should be quite helpless. You were saying you had an idea who this killer is? Yes. Uh, picture, if you will, a man who lived in Trinidad, emotional enough to murder, strong enough to use a knife, and able to use it with accuracy and dispatch. Do you hope to find a man who fits such a description, Mr. Holm? I have, Mr. Vickers. Really? Who? Who fits such a description, Mr. Holmes? You're not blind, you know. I beg your pardon? When you went to fetch my drink just now, I moved from there to here. And you noticed it. Not because you spoke. You spoke first. Where did you hide the body, Mr. Vickers? In that cupboard over there? Go! No. Yes? You must listen to me. Captain Pitt and the crew of the Gloria North 
We're not primarily concerned with the cargo. Or the cargo as we usually think of it. They were smuggling natives from Trinidad into England. I was married to a native, Mr. Holmes. A beautiful woman. And we had a beautiful child. Pitt came to me and offered to take them to England. Price was a hundred pounds, the ship, the Gloria North. He guaranteed their safe arrival. I concluded the transaction, I paid the money. At five miles from Southampton, the Gloria North was approached by a patrol boat. Pitt became frightened. The natives were dragged overboard in chains. They were drowned. All the natives. And my wife. And my child. I swore then that I would take my revenge. It has taken me five years, Mr. Holmes. The men I killed deserve death. Perhaps. But no man has the right to be judge and executioner. I had. And I'm not finished yet, Mr. Holmes. There are others. And no one is going to stop me, not even you, Mr. Holmes. Is more killing the answer? It is my answer! Before you strike, Mr. Vickers, look in the mirror. Thank you.